Welcome to This Week in South Carolina. I'm Gavin Jackson. With the announcement of Scout Motors investing $2 billion to open a plant in Richland County, South Carolina continues to see a manufacturing boom in the state. Commerce Secretary Harry Lightsey joins me to discuss the process of landing the deal and the state of economic development in South Carolina. Secretary Lightsey, thanks for joining me today. It's my pleasure. Great to see you. So we've been meaning to get you on the show for some time now. I know you became secretary back in 2021, and a lot has happened during your time here since you took the reins from longtime secretary Bobby Hitt. But before we get into economic development talk, I just want to get some of your background, if you could just explain uh, your background, where you came from. I think this is a second or third act for you coming from the private sector. Uh, well, at least the second or third act. So uh, really spent the majority of my career in uh, telecom. Uh, mostly with the uh, regional uh, Bell operating company uh, in the southeast region, Bell South. Um, and then uh, after Bell South and AT&T merged, uh, retired uh, from AT&T, and then uh, uh, joined uh, General Motors and spent about uh, eight years with General Motors, retiring from there uh, in 2019. Um, I did a brief uh, some brief work with a small consulting firm uh, called Hawksbill Advisors with some friends of mine who had worked with at both AT&T and, and at uh, General Motors. And, um, and then COVID hit and, uh, and we kind of went through that like everybody else. And uh, about the time we were coming out of COVID, uh, Secretary Hitt decided to step down and uh, I had this opportunity and I was very, very blessed to uh, be able to spend some time uh, serving my home state. And Secretary Lightsey, let's just start with the biggest news here uh, so far this year, and that's the Scout Motors deal, that $2 billion deal, 4,000 new jobs coming to the Midlands in the coming years. Uh, tell us about the significance of this deal and just what it means for the region at this point. Well, so I think the Midlands um, is uh, one of the areas uh, that really, and of course it's my hometown, Columbia is my hometown, I grew up here, but it has, uh, it has lacked uh, an industrial identity. Uh, if you think about uh, BMW and the upstate and Boeing and Volvo and the, and the low country, uh, the Midlands has been uh, identified largely as the state capital, kind of the seat of state government, uh, and uh, once upon a time, it was kind of a financial center of the state, uh, but uh, that eroded with uh, interstate banking. And so I think the, the Midlands has kind of lacked that industrial identity. And I think Scout Motors really provides that opportunity for the Midlands to establish itself, just as the upstate has been able to, and uh, the low country has been able to. So. Uh, I think it's really exciting. Uh, Scout Motors home is going to be here in the Midlands, and I think that is very significant. Uh, you know, they are they are just getting started with this brand, uh, but it is a brand owned by the largest automobile manufacturer in the world, uh, which is Volkswagen, and uh, this will be their home facility. And uh, you know that I think is uh, going to be substantial in terms of identity as well. So I think. Uh, you know, what BMW has meant uh, to the upstate over the, the last 30 years and going forward, uh, what Boeing and Volvo have established in the low country just in the last 10, 15 years, uh, that's the kind of identity that we're talking about, I think, for the, the coming uh, years and decades uh, for the Midlands as well with Scout Motors. So transformational investment right there. Can you give us a little background, sir, about how this deal materialized and uh, what made the Blythewood site so appealing to Scout Motors? Well, I think the, the Blythewood site is appealing for a lot of reasons, and uh, certainly that's what we continue to stress with the company once they started looking at us. Uh, you know, it is, it's a great location on I-77, which is a major interstate highway, uh, which provides a, a high level of visibility, uh, particularly uh, for people who are traveling uh, from uh, the north and Midwest uh, to the south to come to our beaches. Uh, in South Carolina and Georgia and Florida. So I think that is a definitely important. Uh, our location really is at the center of the Southeast, which is the fastest growing region in the country. And so the logistics of being able to reach the entire Southeast are, uh, were incredibly important. And frankly, uh, just our location uh, 
Columbia is almost uh, exactly halfway between Miami and New York City. And from their site, uh, literally they can, uh, over two thirds of the US population is within a one day's drive. So, uh, you know, the, all of that is, is, is very, uh, very important to them. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, this is going to be an American vehicle made in America for the American market. They want to be identified with that. And South Carolina's location is, is perfect for that. And we can stick with Scott for a little bit, too, because a major factor in this deal, too, which was really kind of came together, I think, about two months after we were passed over originally. Uh, but one of the big factors was the $1.3 billion incentive package that we offered them. Can you tell us where that money is coming from and, and how you ensure that taxpayers get the most bang for the buck and return on investment here? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I'll say that, uh, you know, this was a very competitive process. And uh, we learned that Scout had looked at, at 74 other sites in, in a variety of other states. And so uh, we think uh, our incentive package, as it turned out, was very competitive with other states. Um, I'm, I don't know officially if we were offering any more or less than other states. I think we were all very competitive. Uh, but the other thing about our incentives that I think I, I can't stress enough is that we are not uh, just providing money to the company. This is actually uh, money that is being invested in uh, the site in South Carolina. So uh, for example, this, this will pay for a highway interchange that in addition to serving uh, Scout Motors will also serve uh, the residents of the fast growing uh, Blythewood area. Um, it will pay for uh, railroad infrastructure and additional road work uh, and site work itself. So uh, the money is, is going to be spent in South Carolina, on the site, on South Carolina. And, uh, and as such, the taxpayers of South Carolina have the benefit uh, of that investment uh, in addition to Scout Motors. So it's not like we're just handing a big company a check. Um, there has been some misinformation about that, but uh, I just want, I would love for the viewing audience to know that we're going to be very careful in terms of how this money is sent, spent. All, all of the uh, money has to be, uh, uh, I guess, vouched for. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to have documentation that proves uh, how they've spent the money before it will be dispersed. Uh, so, uh, you know, we will make sure that it is spent appropriately and uh, on the right things. Yes, Secretary, because there's always been some heartburn over offering incentives, some call it corporate welfare, uh, especially when deals fall apart, like we saw with the Panthers deal up in Rock Hill. Um, you know, there's fears of wasted money being spent. But is this basically the cost of doing business these days when it comes to these incentives packages and making sure there are clawbacks in there so we get that money back? Yeah, so that's a great point about the clawbacks. Uh, we do have uh, clawbacks in this agreement. So if uh, Scout uh, Motors fails to uh, to reach the performance hurdles that it is agreed to contractually, uh, we are uh, we do have the right to to get uh, the money back that we've invested in in the site for them. So in addition to uh, having a much improved site, you know we have the ability to actually get up to almost uh, 800 million. Uh, dollars of that investment uh, back. Uh, so we would have the benefit of all the improvements on the site plus uh, the $800 million back. And uh, those uh, clawbacks are guaranteed by Volkswagen, which, as I said previously, is the, the largest automobile manufacturer in the world and, and the seventh largest company in the world. So very substantial company. We feel very secure uh, with their guarantee uh, of, the, of the clawbacks and the payback of a $200 million loan uh, that they're going to use to make uh, further improvements on the site itself. Secretary Lancy, when we look at having another auto manufacturer in the state, I think this will be our fourth. What does that signal to the country? I mean, are we, uh, and it has that position in our state going forward, are we pretty much an automotive state at this point? I know we build planes as well, but um, how do we stack up when we look at other states when it comes to the automotive industry? Well, I think, I think this certainly puts South Carolina on the map as an automotive powerhouse, having a third major global uh, OEM uh, here in our state. You know, we're a small state geographically, but having uh, three major global OEMs uh, located here in our state 
uh, certainly positions us uh, with some much larger states uh, like Michigan and Tennessee and Georgia and others. So uh, I think I think that uh, this sends a great signal in terms of uh, suppliers who want to locate here to be close uh, to these global OEMs. You know, we also have several other uh, companies that are uh, producing uh, vehicles uh, as part of this uh, mobility revolution. Uh, Proterra makes transit buses. Uh, Oshkosh Defense will be making the next generation postal delivery vehicle. Uh, Mercedes uh, makes uh, vans, uh, Sprinter vans uh, in the low country as well. Uh, so uh, if you add all that together, plus the over 500 uh, suppliers that we have here in this state, 75,000 plus South Carolinians already working in the auto industry. And I think we're uh, positioned for tremendous uh, growth going forward into the future. It's, it's a key, key part of our economy. I think it's also important to stress that, you know, the automobile uh, industry is undergoing its biggest change since the days of Henry Ford. You know, they're, they're making this uh, changeover from the gasoline combustion engine to the, the battery electric vehicle. And in order to protect uh, the jobs that we do have here in the state in the automobile industry, you know, we have to make that pivot with the industry or else uh, all the folks that are working here, their jobs are at risk uh, as they're identified as working with an outdated technology. So uh, I think it's very important for us to send the signal that we are embracing this future for the automobile industry. We want to be part of it. Um, at the same time, I will say, you know, the automobile industry is certainly a very significant part of our economy and uh, and our GDP, but uh, we do have a very diversified economy in our state. And as you mentioned, you know, we have uh, certainly Boeing and Lockheed Martin uh, in Greenville producing F-16 uh, fighter jets, Boeing producing the 787 uh, Dreamliner in Charleston. Uh, so the aerospace industry is, is a big part of our economy. Uh, the fastest growing part of our economy the last uh, two or three years has been in the life sciences area. So we've seen tremendous, tremendous growth there. So our economy is very diversified and I think that's important. We'll continue to look to diversify our economy so that uh, we're not uh, subject to the ups and downs of any one sector uh, of, of industry. Yeah, we've seen that in the past for sure there. Uh, and I did want to just talk about how you're talking about this revolution, uh, mobility revolution. We talk about electric vehicles too, because that is uh, huge when it comes to these suppliers you're also mentioning. Of course, also our OEMs like BMW and Volvo, which are pivoting massive investments to, to their uh, electrifying their vehicle lines too. But you've also seen massive investments when it comes to uh, EV batteries, uh, Redwood Materials, for example, Envision AESC. I mean, those are all related to these big investments, which I think is all pretty much spawned because of that bipartisan infrastructure law that Joe Biden signed in 2021 to really incentivize a lot of this to be happening in America? Yeah, I think I think there certainly are two dynamics that are going on. I think in the, the pandemic uh, taught many uh, companies uh, that they need to have uh, their supply chain close by. So I think that uh, because of the pandemic, there was already uh, significant uh, momentum toward uh, onshoring uh, supply chain in, in multiple industries, and that included the automobile industry as well. Uh, but uh, there are, as you pointed out, incentives uh, as part of the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, there are incentives there that uh, are there to promote uh, investment uh, in the United States and bringing the EV supply chain here. Uh, you know, frankly, uh, before the, the pandemic, uh, China controlled over 90% of the, the battery manufacturing uh, capabilities uh, in the globe and over 90% of the, the materials that go into uh, batteries. Um, and so I think uh, having the United States develop uh, its own capability so that we're not uh, subject to uh, another country's um, uh, capabilities is certainly very important. And especially when you look at stacking up against other states too. I know we were talking about just uh, you know the cost of doing business with incentives, but how do we stack up when it comes to uh, these these suppliers, these manufacturers? I mean, in, in terms of competing for these, what what are some of the advantages that we have? Obviously, you're talking about location being a big one. Uh, how do you how do we really compete with the Georgias and the Tennessees when it comes to these jobs? 
Well, it's all, for different ones, they're gonna be different characteristics. But I think one of the things we have in South Carolina is we have a very robust uh, set of, of, uh, of geographic uh, advantages. In addition to that, the Port of Charleston is very important to, to many companies. The, the largest and uh, eighth largest uh, port in the United States, the deepest uh, port on the East Coast now uh, with the dredging finished. Uh, so I think Charleston is a tremendous asset uh, to, to our state and, um, and we use that every day uh, when we're talking to companies. Um, I think the closeness now to uh, all of these uh, uh, global OEMs who are located. So we have those that we just talked about that are located here in South Carolina, but we also are very close to uh, Hyundai, which is uh, located, uh, is building a major facility right outside of Savannah. Uh, Kia, which is already, which has been uh, in Georgia for uh, a number of years. Uh, you know, Volkswagen, Nissan, and uh, General Motors, uh, and then soon Ford are establishing major facilities in Tennessee. Uh, there are Mercedes and uh, Toyota have facilities in Alabama and Mississippi. So, you know, the Southeast in general has is, is become a very uh, core part of the automobile industry in the United States. And, um, you know, if the suppliers choose to locate here in South Carolina, they have, they have access to all of those businesses. Secretary, let's pivot to a workforce because obviously our state's growing, the Southeast is growing, but our workforce population is set to shrink over the coming years according to budget forecasters in our state. So when we talk about record investments, we're also talking about big job numbers like Scout, we're talking about 4,000 jobs and thousands of other jobs for a lot of these other investments. Uh, are we gonna have enough people to fill these jobs? Yeah, I think we're confident that we will. Um, you know, our schools, our tech colleges, uh, are, are really excellent facilities at training people with the right skill sets to, uh, to meet uh, the jobs that are, that are available in the marketplace. Uh, and uh, we work, uh, we have a tremendous program called Ready SC that really works with businesses that are locating here in our state and understands what skill sets they need to uh, uh, succeed and uh, then works to uh, train uh, students with, with those skill sets. So the tech colleges, you know, which are globally recognized as, as leading institutions are very important, but also our four-year colleges um, have uh, established uh, strong reputations. Uh, Clemson uh, University has the only undergraduate automotive engineering uh, degree in the country. Uh, and uh, that is a, that's a huge asset. Clemson also has the International Center for Automotive Research, which is a recognized global leading uh, center of, of research in the automobile industry. Um, the University of South Carolina right here in the Midlands and, and close to uh, Scout has uh, the McNair uh, Engineering School and uh, the Sumwald Engineering School. Uh, you know, they produce uh, engineering graduates every year, uh, which are very important to these companies. In addition to that, we have uh, six of the of the seven uh, HBCUs uh, in the state are located in the Midlands uh, area, uh, and Benedict College, uh, Allen, uh, SC State, Claflin, uh, several of those have engineering programs as well. So uh, you know the diversity that's available through the HBCUs is very important mm -hmm. uh, to these companies as well. So we, do you think that we'll be stopping this brain drain that everyone always seemed to complain about for years until we got a lot of these big manufacturers? I mean, people getting their degrees, moving on to somewhere else. Uh, do we see maybe some more capture now that we have these huge manufacturers in the state, these uh, attractive, high-paying jobs? It's, it's certainly our hope uh, that our students will stay here. You know, that is, uh, that's very important. Uh, obviously, it will be important to developing our workforce uh, and providing our citizens with great jobs. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that uh, is, is a big part of what we're trying to do is, is provide the kind of jobs that lean into the future that are gonna make our students excited about the possibilities of working uh, with these companies that are, that are locating here uh, and uh, provide the kind of opportunities they want to, to stay here. So mm -hmm. uh, that is a, a big part of what we're trying to do. 
And Secretary, when we, we talk about these big manufacturers, we talk about Greenville, we talk about uh, big centers of uh, commerce here in the Midlands, we talk about things down in the low country like Boeing and Volvo, uh, but there's of course the rural areas of our state too that uh, sometimes feel like they've been neglected in some ways. How do you see those areas growing? Obviously we've seen an influx of federal money too to help support a lot of infrastructure out there. Are we gonna make, it, are we gonna make these places a little bit more uh, attractive to big manufacturers or to more jobs? What's commerce doing to address that? Well, so, you know, it's uh, the rural areas uh, of the state are, are certainly uh, an economic challenge and something we work on uh, every year. I, I will say that uh, very proud to say that that we have met our goal for uh, creating rural jobs uh, in the state for the last three years in a row. And, uh, you know, this year we're, we're very much on track. Uh, we just had a huge announcement in Allendale, uh, South Carolina, uh, Vietnamese. Uh, tire uh, manufacturing company is going to locate uh, their first facility outside of Vietnam, uh, outside of Southeast Asia in Allendale, uh, which is really one of the most uh, distressed parts of our state. So uh, it's going to produce a thousand jobs in, in Allendale. And I think that is every bit as significant as the 4,000 jobs that Scout is bringing to the Midlands uh, for that part of our state. So. We do work on that. Uh, there are uh, efforts underway to uh, enhance the infrastructure in, in the rural parts of the state. We work very closely with our sister agency, the Rural Infrastructure Authority, and they have just uh, been uh, in the process of, of being given uh, a billion and a half uh, dollars to provide water and sewer infrastructure, primarily in, in rural parts of our state. Uh, I, we work very closely with the Office of Regulatory Staff, which is working very hard to deliver a broadband across our state, inclu including to uh, rural parts of our state. So I think as that infrastructure starts to fill in, and frankly, as um, these rural areas uh, start to uh, join uh, the areas of, of, of major development, um, more opportunities will come. So. If you look at Scout Motors, for example, uh, it is in the northernmost part of, of Richland County, which is a very considered a very uh, urban developed county, but uh, it's within a few miles of Fairfield County, uh, Newberry County, uh, uh, Lexington County, Orangeburg County. You know all of these uh, areas that uh, you know once once uh, are considered uh, rural. But I think they will have uh, opportunities uh, to uh, land uh, companies uh, that produce um, jobs for those areas as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're talking about the suppliers too, like we even saw last year with, like we said, Envision ASC going to, to Florence, bringing a lot of jobs there and investment there too, to that growing region. Uh, we have about two minutes left, sir. I just want to ask you, when it comes to prospective projects, uh, do you see economic headwinds getting, uh, you know, affecting recruitment and expansion efforts in the state when we talk about potential slowdowns with the global and the, the national economy? You know, we really haven't seen that. Um, we are, we've, we've opened, we're continuing to see uh, large numbers of, of projects that are, they're looking at our state. Um, I think that these macro factors like uh, the desire to onshore supply chain, uh, the, the conversion uh, in the automobile industry, uh, these macro factors are outweighing the short term uh, possibilities of uh, a recession in the U.S. economy, and they're spurring uh, investment uh, for the long term. Uh, so these companies are making these investments for, for years and decades to come. And uh, so far, uh, they are not uh, looking at kind of what, what is likely to happen in the, ne in the, in the U.S. economy uh, in the next year or two and letting that impact uh, their decisions. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be just get on out of this with less than a minute left, sir. I just want to ask you what your outlook is for the rest of the year. Should we expect some more big announcements coming forward? Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, uh, we never know uh, when a, when a business is going to decide to to locate here until they they tell us that they've made that decision. We have uh, we're working on a large number of projects. We're working on a large number of, of very big projects. Uh, we would be very excited to to. Uh, have any of them decide to locate in South Carolina. 
but it is a very, very competitive world out there. Mm -hmm. uh, other states are vying for these projects as well. And, and we'll just see, see what happens as the year progresses. All right, we'll be watching too. That's South Carolina Commerce Secretary Harry Lightsey. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. To stay up to date with the latest news throughout the week, check out the South Carolina Lead. It's a podcast that I host on Tuesdays and Saturdays that you can find on SouthCarolinaPublicRadio.org or wherever you find podcasts. For South Carolina ETV, I'm Gavin Jackson. Be well, South Carolina.